In this episode of Mind Pump, we answer questions that were asked by listeners like you. What they do is they go to our Instagram page, Mind Pump Media. They post a question under the qua meme. Hmm. We pick the best ones and then we answer them. But the way we start out the episode is by talking about current events, scientific studies, and just random topics. So here's what we talked about. In this episode, we start out by talking about my new shoes. I'm wearing new shoes, and I totally thought the guys would make fun of me, but apparently I accidentally got some cool shoes. You can float in those, right? According to these guys. Then we talked about our trip to Santa Barbara to listen to Arthur Brooks talk and interview him. He has now since become one of our favorite, favorite people. Then we talked about uh, the CBD post by one of our friend fitness influencers and why we disagree with it and why uh, full-spectrum cannabinoids, uh, in other words, like hemp oil extract from Ned, by the way, it's a company we work with, may have some actual health applications. Now, again, Ned is one of our sponsors. They make full-spectrum hemp oil extract, meaning it contains a multitude of cannabinoids, not just CBD, and the studies show that when you take cannabinoids together, uh, also known as the entourage effect, seems to have much better effects. Now, we have a discount for you. Just go to hello ned. that's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump, and you'll get 15% off your first purchase. Then Adam talked about Wrangler Peekaboos. These are new pants that were done on, <laughs> online. I hope they were joking. Yeah, you guys got to watch the commercial. I talked about the documentary on Netflix about Bikram. Um, wow, that was crazy. Had no idea that, about that history. Um, we talked Sleaze about bag. the cyber truck. Adam and Justin think that it's going to be a bomb. Mm. Um, I think it's going to be the bomb. Let's see who's right. It is ugly. Then we talked about Apple's new $1 billion facility in Austin, Texas. That might be a good real estate investment somewhere out there. Mm, Let's give everybody ideas. We talked about how Silicon Valley uh, and engineers and entrepreneurs are doing dopamine fasting. I like how they brand everything. Dopamine fasting. I know. We came up with it. Then we talked about the free gut health course that NCI certifications is giving away to our listeners. We've already done this once. Thousands of people have had have gone over there, downloaded this six hundred dollar course for free to learn because more because they're smart, Sal, about their gut health. Well, they've opened it back up, so you can go there right now and get a free course. It's a six hundred dollar course, by the way. It's a real educational course. You get it for free. Here's what you do: go to ncicertifications.com forward slash mind pump. And again, it's a free gut health course. So they waive the $600 fee. Then we get into the fitness portion of the episode. Here's where we answer the questions. The first question, is there any truth to when people say that squats and deadlifts thicken your waist? So in other words, people say, hey, don't squat or deadlift. It'll make your waist bigger. Ooh, the thickness. Is that correct or are they idiots? Find out in that part of the episode. They're idiots. Next question, uh, this person wants to know, what's the difference between priming and warming up? So we break that all down. They are similar, but they're definitely not the same. Next question, this person wants to know if there's any benefits to stability training or using tools like BOSU balls or or Dyna discs. So we talk about how you can use those for your fitness goals and how not to use them. And the circus. And the final question, this person wants to know, why so many people who do yoga or why the top like yoga girls look skinny um, and, and long and lean and all that stuff? Like, is it the yoga or is the, there a bit of a self-selecting bias? Also, I want to remind everybody, you have four days left. That's it. Four days. MAPS performance is 50% off sale. Will be ending in four days. You need to act now if you want to get the fitness workout program that was designed to build muscle, burn body fat, improve your athletic performance and mobility. It's called mass performance because it's performance based. It's a different workout. It's not like your traditional resistance training workout. You'll do new exercises. You'll be able to move in different planes of movement, improve your mobility, and just have a lot of fun. It's half off right now. The sale ends in four days. Here's how you get the 50% off discount. Go to mapsgreen.com and use the code Green 50, G-R-E-E-N, five zero, no space for the discount. We're on, on, on both two, the stream? Are we? Oh, okay. Are we hot like my- uh, like lined up. We hot like my kicks or what? I actually- Super hot. So I bet you came in here thinking that we were going to clown those shoes. Yeah, because mm. I told you that's what I thought. I uh, When I got, so my brother has these shoes, comes to my house for dinner, mm-hmm. 
And he's like, these are the most comfortable. My, my brother and I are very similar when it comes to shoes. We just care about how nice they feel. You told this story, but we hadn't seen them yet. Yeah, so I yeah. tried them on his feet. I took them off his because you know, we have the same size shoe. I took them off, took them off his foot, put them on. I'm like, this is amazing. Ordered them, looked at them. And uh, here I'll put it up for the camera so you can see. Yeah. Well, you you don't and I'm even... like I'm like this is the most. It's like you got mud tread. Com- comfortable shoe ever, and I'm like I can't wait to come to Mind Pump, and just get the <laughs> shit. Yeah. Like I knew I was gonna get like the you're shit. You're all springy. But what I hear from you is I accidentally got better looking shoes than before. Yeah. You did totally so, by so, accident. That's what happens when you don't know what's good or not. No, like, no. Stylistically, so I actually it's funny because uh, in my notes today to bring up on the show, I because I just I like to bring up like companies to keep an eye on or watch, and one of them is uh, a sneaker company called On, and it's a tennis shoe. That you're just happen to be wearing, which is crazy. So weird because this was in my notes today to, to bring up, and it's because they're they're a, they do about a hundred to two hundred million dollars a year, but they just sign uh, Roger Federer, so super famous tennis player. Oh, I which, know who that is. Who's got all kinds of ties and connections to Rolex? I love and when Nike. I know an athlete. You know, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he just he literally just signed with them. So he that's going to be a, a a big deal and a big push coming from him. So I bet we're going to see those shoes pop up all over the place. And up until this point, I was unfamiliar with the brand. And when you walked in wearing them, I saw the Logan. I thought, oh, so now let me, let me ask you a question. Be totally 100% honest. Okay. Let's say you didn't know about cool athlete guys signing with them. <laughs> I walk in with this, these shoes. Do you talk more shit? In other words, is your are you being influenced by... Well, the athlete is that why you're saying they're better? Oh, I wouldn't wear those still. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. but that's not the they're question. Kind of yeah, funky. Yeah. I, I think where you went right I mean, I think is that jo- they're all black. I think Joe Montana co-signed for fucking Sketchers, and I still wouldn't. Wear oh those my god! <laughs> so, yeah, did he really? He did I, I think so? Yeah. Didn't Joe Montana? One of the big I, I or Steve like Young? One it was of like the Spring Soul ones. Yeah. It was like yeah. the shit ones. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it had no influence then. No, no. So they so they're better than the other ones. Well, they they're solid black, right? So you can't go wrong with the like. They're a pure. I mean, the soul. It's the soul of it that I'm having a hard time with you know what it reminds me of you know those uh like styrofoam like popcorn packing things yeah yeah i feel like they just glued those on i'm taking notes right now so all black good yes yeah well you can't regardless go, yeah you all can't black really is yeah it's a pretty basic okay. yeah and it's like a, a wide looking shoe so it's a decent looking shoe it's not a bad looking shoe again i, I probably wouldn't rock those but it's it's better than what you were wearing oh man i'm you so were, disappointed you were wearing <laughs> you were trying to go completely opposite no i was just like this yeah. is gonna be great they're gonna talk so much crap You're roast me no. i can't wait to hear it and then i it, i'm disappointed yeah. I think it's, it's unbelievable that you're wearing them today. The, the day that you brought them into wear, Isn't that was weird. The same, yeah, no, it is weird. Yeah, mm-hmm. but, but maybe that's a sign they're going to do well. Who knows? Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> they got a dad market. They, got a, they just got a free commercial you know, all over it yeah, from yeah, right. us. Yeah. So. Yeah. Not, not really though. Yeah. You guys are like the kind of ugly. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, I was like, watch this company. I was going to tell you people know, like, keep an eye on it, see what it does. You I have mean, no idea how close I am to buying just Velcro shoes because I love. You know I know you are. Or slippers. I know you. You know the the. The, yeah, the New Balance like 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 Velcro uh, high you know sole uh, ones. Yeah, like, that has your name all over it. Yeah, you just like it's like you're walking on like right. you yeah. know. I feel like you're avoiding that just you know until until you get it down. No, nah, I just haven't made the effort to go find a pair of Velcro shoes. The mm. second I think about it, when I'm out to buy, like it, the second I'm out to get shoes, and I go, oh yeah, Velcro. Yeah. I'm coming back with them. Moccasins. <laughs> Ooh, these feel great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. this, yeah, Uggs for men. Yeah. Please, God. <laughs> Uggs. Please. <laughs> I dare you, dude. Do they make them? I dare yes, you. they do. It was like a little thing for a while there. Yeah. I got buddies that rock them. I just couldn't. I can't see it. You need your pumpkin chai latte and Uggs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be set up. Your, your Vori, Viore sweats tucked into oh, your Uggs. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, ooh. That's a look, son. Ooh, that keeps all the warmth inside. Yeah. I like that idea. Super comfy. <laughs> Dude, you guys have a, a great time last week. Was it a Thursday, Friday down in Santa Barbara? Oh, yeah. Uh, that was amazing. What a what an amazing time, wasn't it? Yeah, great talk. You know, we get there, man. What it was such a, a profound like talk just to sit and listen to them uh, discuss. So this is the first time this has ever happened to me. Where um, so we went down uh, to Santa Barbara to listen to Arthur C. Brooks do a talk on Bishop Barron's uh, Word on Fire channel, and for people who know, don't know Arthur Brooks, he's a, a decorated author. He's written some great books. He writes lots of articles. He's a Harvard professor, economist, and social scientist. Netflix documentary? Yes. His Netflix documentary, The Pursuit. I highly recommend uh, you watch it. Just a brilliant guy. 
And I personally have become a huge fan of this guy. So huge fan. So we contact him and he agrees to come on our show. We go down there in order to watch him talk, which by the way, this talk was so impactful and brilliant. Got us emotional several times. Um, and then to interview him. So we go down there. I'm going down as a fan, right? Mm -hmm. So we're walking into the auditorium. Oh, you're going to share this. Huh? I'm going, it's just, it's crazy. It's never happened to me, right? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm a huge fan. I walk up, he sees us, yells our name out, comes down and then proceeds to tell us how he's been listening to mind pump for two yeah. years. Yeah. So weird. It's like, I was uh, like, you listen to our episodes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> totally you're, just yeah, like you, ignorant. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. oh my God. I just, I just, it didn't even occur to me. You, you know, know what I mean? Because I, like, I'm a big fan. And then yeah. to find out he's a fan, I'm like, what? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Are we friends now? <laughs> <laughs> Let's hog. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. No. It was, it was so remarkable. No, what, a gr what a great dude. No, no, no. It was an, an incredible experience, man. And the, cra the crazy part, which I, I think that trips me out, is that. We almost didn't go. You know, there were we were really close to not going. Yeah, our um, schedule is getting kind of crazy. No, yeah, it's crazy, and that's a long drive. I mean, we had to drive all the way down to Santa Barbara, and it was basically for a, a night talk and then a, a six a, a six a.m. interview in the morning. Yeah, uh, and then to get back in the car and drive again. I mean, that's just you know ten hours plus, so ten to twelve hours of driving for a total of two or three hours worth of work and you know and before we met him you never know like if this this guy's a, a big name he's all you know he's got his own documentary he's hung out with the Dalai Lama he's hanging hung, hangs out with all the presidents like I don't know if he's pretentious I don't know if he's gonna be like oh I'm tired the next day and just blow us off last mm -hmm. minute like who, who we don't know right and of course his assistant our assistant our court talking back and forth and you know they do their job which is oh we're looking for the interview oh yeah us too and you know, so we're getting the 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 emails that were are being cc'd to us and see that oh he's you know excited for the interview, but that's normal shit. So, you know, we're all kind of questioning whether we should go down uh, or not, and is it really worth our time to do that? And we were really close. And I remember Sal, you spoke up and you know you said something. I think that it, that was the final word. It was. You know, hey, uh, at the end of the it day, was, I have spoken. <laughs> I have spoken. <laughs> this is the way. And when I say that's that, the everybody, new one, everybody right? falls this in line. This is the way. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's yeah. not what I have spoken. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you you said something that I think uh, struck home to to Justin and I, and and I think we all agreed. To, that's uh, our integrity, and that was, hey, at the end of the day, uh, we originally committed to coming down to this event. We said we were going to do it like a month or two ago, uh, before our schedule got crazy. And hey, if it ends up he, we we don't have a conversation with him, doesn't work out. At the end of the day, it was our word. We said we would be there. Uh, therefore, we should we should be there. And I, we all said, "You're right. You're right. Let's do it." Isn't it crazy mm -hmm. how when you're presented with, and this is what all the spiritual teachings uh, echo, um, when you're presented with choices, going with the most honest, truthful option will will result in the best possible outcome. Mm -hmm. And although sometimes it doesn't seem that way because uh, we don't necessarily see the potential of the downstream effects of things like, you know, let's say you get you, you get confronted by your friend uh, on something that you said about them and you think, well, I'm going to lie because uh, I can't tell them, you know, what I said. And you feel like that gets you off the hook a little bit, you know, downstream that can that will turn into a worse outcome than just being honest or maintaining integrity. And we've learned this lesson this is like several times now where yeah. we've done that where you know we say okay no we made it we, we, this was our word so let's stick with it and boy am I glad we went down. Yeah, it's usually the ones where we go back and forth and back and forth and we're just like wrestling with it for like a couple <clears throat> days even and it just keeps presenting itself back like right when we're like no nah, I don't think we're going. It just yeah. one more opportunity comes up it's like you can't you have to pay attention to that. Speaking of integrity, uh, I got tagged on uh, Steffi Cohen's post mm. um, in regards to uh, CBD. And, you know, here's another situation where I, I appreciate, um, you know, the content that, that she puts out and, and for the most part, I think really good information. But here's another example, and I think I've, I've pointed out one of their posts that she did before that I think sometimes just ends up confusing a lot of people on whether, okay, is this good or is this bad? I, you know, because she came out and she did a whole thing on CBD and, and I, and I agree literally with uh, most everything she's saying, but 
if you're somebody who is in search of you know something like this and is, is it potentially could it be potentially beneficial for me and is this something that I should use and then you come across a, a post like that where she's basically you know saying it's the you know like we had the the gold rush before and like everybody's just trying to make money off of CBD which I agree with her like I think yeah, that's true I think that there's now we have it in fucking CBD cereal and yeah, fucking we've talked about that multiple yeah, times right and I think but that's to me that's the fitness space this is what mm-hmm. we do with anything we 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 yeah. find something that has a little bit of science behind it and supports some things and then we go bananas with it. And then now it's for everything and rub it on your face and do it with this. And, oh, it'll help you build muscle. And it's it's good for all these things. And, you know, back to what made me think of this is talking about our integrity. I mean, even when we signed uh, with, a, with a, you know, full spectrum hemp oil, one of the things that was really important to us was that, you know, we're not going to, going to tell people to, you know, take this shit for all these other reasons, but there is definitely a place for it. And I think that uh, I know personally uh, lots of people that have b- benefited greatly from it. Yeah. One, one um, I would say, drawback to or one weakness that scientists or, you know, the academics tend to have is that they tend to discredit anything that isn't um, – Sci- that isn't clinically proven in a study. So even if the anecdotes are in the thousands or last for thousands of years. So I'll give you a great example, okay? Um, for years, probably hundreds of years, if not more, people have been using honey as a cough suppressant. So if you have, if you have a cough, and this was, this was considered an old wives' tale by Western scientists for a long time. But for a long time, right, your mom, you got a cold, what does your mom do? Make your tea, put some honey in the tea. Is it a wives' tale or a wise tale? Wives', wives tale. Yeah. Like yeah. with a V? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying that one for a long time. <laughs> yes. I'm so glad we can help. We'll keep track of all these. <laughs> yeah, I know. I got to get rid of all these, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Soon I won't have a library <laughs> yeah. anymore. It's an, yeah. it's an old wives' tale? Yeah. yeah hey, so wise. guys, listen. Uh, <laughs> well, put some honey man. in your It kind of works, too. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? It does. A wise okay. guy. I decided to ask. Okay, but sorry. Continue For on. a long time, you know, and when I was a kid, if I had a cough, my mom would do that. She'd put it in, in, in hot tea or whatever, give it to me, or give me a spoonful of it, and I'd drink it. And uh, Western medicine and scientists, Western scientists are like, that's silly. Uh, old wives' tale doesn't do anything to help you, um, even though thousands of anecdotes said that it helped. Um, people had personal experiences, and if you go back long enough, you see that it's been used by cultures that way. So, eventually, what ends up happening is studies come out to show that there's a compound in honey. There's actually a compound in honey that does have cough suppressing effects. And now, why is this? Why is this important to to remember? Because what it does is it actually makes scientists and Western scientists look stupid, because they 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 sink their heels into the ground, they make this absolute statement. Um, it doesn't do anything, even though there's all this anecdote. And then the study mm-hmm. study finally comes out to support it, and then people stop trusting scientists. Do you know what the study said on anabolic steroids up until the early '90s? You couldn't find any that said that they built muscle. You know what they said? All the weight gain came from water retention. And athletes were like, yeah, wow. right, dude, laughing their asses off. <laughs> yeah. This is true. This is true. Until the 80s and 90s, when when people would come on and debate mm-hmm. anabolic steroids, you, you had people saying, well, athletes take them because they work. And then you had scientists going, well, the studies show that it's just water retention. That's where the weight gain comes yeah. from. So, you know, there's no real muscle gain or whatever from it or whatever. Silly. So now here we are with uh, CBD, and I'll, I'll extend it to say – um, cannabinoids. Okay, the anecdotes are plenty. There's a. L- In fact, the anecdotes are what drove more the, studies. The science. The reason why now you can buy, uh, you know, medicine that's CBD that's actually prescribed. Well, way way before any of this became super popular in our space. Uh, I mean, this is actually what connected you and I. It is. I mean, uh, before Mind Pump ever existed, um, I was in the medical marijuana field. Uh, We were seeing anywhere between 200 to 300 patients every single day between the two facilities. And I have got hundreds and hundreds of maybe thousands over the the course of two years of people coming back and saying how amazing that uh, CBD was for them and how much it helped specific cases, Mm -hmm. right? And so I was incredibly fascinated with what we were learning about it. At the same time, 
I was talking and communicating with you, and you had been doing all the same re- similar research because your mother in law was going through battling cancer. Mm-hmm. So th- that's and when we first got into this space, before it became popular and before everybody was throwing it in their fucking cereal and oils and everything else to combine and shit, we were talking about. Uh, the application of that, and there are a group of people that it's extremely beneficial to. There's, there's a, there's a lot of people that look. Again, the anecdotes actually drove the science. There's, a, there's, you can now buy medicine, uh, Epidiolex, for example, that is uh, CBD based that r- dramatically reduces the seizures in forms of epilepsy that some children will have that are absolutely devastating. Now that research would have never happened if it wasn't for the massive amounts of anecdotes. There were mm-hmm. parents who were finding that it worked. Were moving to Colorado to get these high CBD strains of cannabis and giving it to the kids against scientists and doctors' wishes right. and saying this fucking works. Then finally, companies were like, "Wait a minute, there's enough here. Let's look at the re- let's let's study this and whatever." Now, here's what the studies show: the studies show that cannabinoids work better together. Okay, so when you isolate cannabinoids, you're going to get not as good of effects as when you combine them um, in what's known as the entourage effect. Now, this is documented. And anecdotes will say this as well. When you talk to people who just take pure CBD versus people who take CBD with other cannabinoids, whether it includes THC or not, you tend to hear, oh, this one works you know, much better. Here's the other thing. And, and this is, I think, why a lot of the academics uh, – and, you know, Steffi Cohen, this is not her expertise anyway. You mm-hmm. know, you, you don't have an expertise. Neither do I, but I can guarantee you I've done more research – on this subject and most people in the fitness space because I had a family, again, a family member who was suffering from, you know, uh, cancer for over a year and a half. And I dived very, very, very deep, actually interviewed scientists and on my own, did all this stuff. Um, but, you know, I, I, it, here's the thing. I know why it sounds crazy because you have all these you have people coming forward saying, cannabinoids help my migraines. Mm-hmm. Cannabinoids help PMS. Cannabinoids help me with my pain. Cannabinoids help me with depression. Cannabinoids help me with anxiety. And you think to yourself, this sounds like snake oil. Right. How can it possibly Too good to be true. help all these different things? And I get that. I do think that there's a large percentage of people that have the placebo effect, or maybe there's a large percentage of people who are just trying to get high or whatever. I get yeah. that. But when you actually look at the mechanisms, the cannabinoid, the, the, the receptors that cannabinoids attach to, and there's two that we've identified, there's CB1 and CB2 receptors, you, these are the most among the most abundant G-protein-coupled receptors in the body. These are the type of receptors that pharmaceutical companies target because they're easy to target and they tell the cell to do something. So they sit on, on top of the cell, you, you target this with a medication, it hits this receptor, and then the cell does something. So it's like a the favorite target of pharmaceutical companies. Well, so far, the cannabinoid receptors are among the most abundant. They're everywhere. So now you th- now it makes sense. Like they're all in the digestive system, nervous system, bones. Um, and so now it's like, oh, okay, it could potentially affect a wide range of things. And we have a cannabinoid system in our bodies for a reason. There's a reason why we have them. Now, here's another thing that we want to consider. This is something that's this is new science. There's some theories right now that state that maybe there are deficiencies in some people in producing their own cannabinoids. Who knows why that happens? It could be lifestyle, genetic, or a combination of the two. Well, if you have deficiencies of cannabinoids, and we know what cannabinoids, what our own body's cannabinoids do, they affect our moods, our motivation, sleep. Um, they can affect uh, you know, our, our, you know, our sex drive. They can affect infl- have an, they have uh, a role in the inflammatory process in the body. If you're deficient, if your body's not producing these cannabinoids, it could show up in a wide range or way of uh, a wide range of symptoms. So perhaps the reason why some people get such great benefits from using things like Ned's hemp oil or you know marijuana or other you know cannabinoid type products, maybe because these some people are producing low amounts, and we don't know why this may happen of their own cannabinoids. So then it makes sense that supplementing it with a phytocannabinoid, which attaches to the same receptors, would have positive effects on these people. And it's also maybe why giving cannabinoids to people who already have abundant endocannabinoids Feel nothing. may not get that big of a, a deal right. mm-hmm. or a difference from it. So yes, the science is emerging. And I, I, that's where I agree with Steffi. Yeah. And I also agree with her that uh, that there's a lot of marketers that are 
you know, post workout, well, pre workout type thing. No, 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 no. You're going to your far. point. Like most, you know, doctors or anybody else that's going to have a title behind their name, they're going to be more conservative about it because, you know, they, they want to wait because they don't want to put their license out there on the line uh, with the information that they're providing. So it's like, it, it feels a lot like they get their hands tied until like the, the big study kind of proves, uh, you know, it's worth where, you know, there's so many, so much anecdotal information out there of people like having success with it. But uh, I feel like that that science a lot of times really drags behind like substantially. It does because they need they have certain uh, criteria and yeah. parameters, which and I, I get. We need that too. We need that balance. But sometimes it's frustrating as shit. Like yeah. uh, even till now, even till this day, you talk to a a lot of experts in skin health. Talk to uh, you know people like doctors who you know work with skin and all that stuff, and you tell them, hey, does does diet can diet give somebody acne? No. Yeah, they'll say no, and I it makes me. Sh- I was like, uh, um, no, at least acknowledge it. Right? Yeah, like that, that's that's what's frustrating to me. It's like you have to at least acknowledge these people are getting results. You, you know, you don't have to like put your your stamp on it, but it's like people are experiencing some things like this. Dude, when leaky gut syndrome was coined, the term was coined by wellness practitioners. These weren't scientists; they were just wellness practitioners, and they came up with this theory of leaky gut syndrome. They were laughed at and mocked. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. They for, were laughed at and mocked. How can you be so like, yeah, adamant? Like yeah. You, you don't know. Now, now there's a medical term for it. It's like I think it's something like intestinal wall hyperpermeability. You know what that means? Leaky gut. Same thing. Yeah. But they were literally laughed at when people were when wellness practitioners were saying the microbiome uh, is very important to your health. They were laughed at. Right. Mm-hmm. They were laughed at. Now. So I'm not saying that the, the, I think, again, I think you have to look at the tools for the job and Western practices and scientists. I mean, you you can't replace them. I think they're brilliant. And if you had to pick one form of medicine or one form of, of, you know, of testing and whatever, that is the the gold standard. However, the one weakness that they have is the anecdote to them doesn't count. Even if it's, you go to Chinese medicine and they prescribe herbs Mm -hmm. for things and Western scientists will say, that herb doesn't work for that. And the Chinese practitioners have, have a 2,000-year-old yeah. record of using it exactly for that. <laughs> you can't discredit that. There's 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 something you know to that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, oh, definitely. So anyway. On a very less serious note, Justin tagged me on a post that may be one of my favorite <laughs> yeah. commercial posts that I've seen in a long time, and that was the Saturday Night Live spoof of the Wrangler jeans. Oh, yeah. gross. Will oh. Ferrell was on Saturday Night Live, and they came up with this commercial. Because <laughs> it's so great, because it's like... You know, it's it, hey, men have not had men, uh, yeah. For, men have not had something to uh, for us, yeah. uh, but cleavage, right? They, <laughs> for uh, for the boob cleavage that girls get. Why? Where where do we get something right. like that? And they came up with peekaboo jeans, peekaboo peekaboo <laughs> Wrangler jeans. Yeah, and they now, have all kinds of different styles. You know, with the heart. I wish I, I wish tail. I wish we had Doug in here right now so I could have him look this up because I'm actually curious if, if Wrangler. Obviously, if they used Wrangler's name like that, they had to. They agreed to the. They had to agree to it, right? Yeah. They had to play somewhat of a part in that. So, uh, you know, kudos to them for having a sense of humor to have some fun with. Hey, that. doesn't that right. hi- doesn't that highlight though? It's a joke. I know it's a joke, obviously, but doesn't that highlight the difference between men and women? Like, yeah. if, if if for a man to get a woman woman's attention wearing more revealing clothes really didn't do anything does it <laughs> yeah but you know i don't know like the gay community might be all about that well, maybe because they're attracting men <laughs> yeah well, that's what i mean it's like yeah that's how men are like very visual like oh yeah that's what i mean it's yeah. that's the difference between men and women like if you go to a party let's say you're like oh i'm gonna go to this party i want to get like woman's attention yeah. you're not gonna go in there with like <laughs> an like a little bit of a half shirt or you know what i mean yeah. like low-rise jeans and most most women would Actually, look at me like that guy's a weirdo. What's funny because I told you guys like the story of how me and Courtney met and like the first time like I was assessing her and all that and I go to bend over to pick something up and I totally had butt crack and she tells everybody how like repulsed she was by me <laughs> and I'm like keep stop telling that story you know but like it, she had like there was nothing there Bro, you still wonder I, I I know I give you the I'm starting to recount all these like first time st- I gotta talk to Courtney about this oh yeah yeah the the shit in the bathroom the first yeah. time you guys had oh, dude, sex I love that story. now the butt crack plumbers crack bro <laughs> how the fuck did you get how did this i cr- survive yeah boy, I, you must have closer you dude. must have laid it down yeah, bro you hey, must have laid it down yeah, when i you got, did that, I got skills otherwise <laughs> yeah, i would I not yeah i would not uh, be here today dude you guys gotta watch the documentary on netflix uh, about bikram 
Oh, did you guys see the commercial? So part? I heard all about this, and I like read up on it when like a lot of these allegations were coming out about this guy, this this guru that came up. But I was so excited to watch. I haven't watched it yet, and you watched it ahead of me, dude. This guy is so Bikram. That's his name. He's the guy that invented Bikram yoga. Oh, yeah, so he invented yoga. it. Yeah. He invented hot yoga. That's where oh. you do yoga, and it's, there's a there's a series of I think twenty six poses. They're done in a particular order. They're in a hot room or whatever. This guy made hundreds of millions of dollars training teachers on how to do it. But you got to watch the documentary because he was such, he is literally the. Did he manipulate the shit like out of women like crazy, bag, right? Well, he's the picture perfect. You, you know, the, the, all of the characteristics of cult leaders? Yeah. yeah. You know, super charismatic, highly narcissistic, a little bit crazy. And then the thing that always blows me away with these cult leaders is not the cult leader. It's always all the fucking people that, that follow him, even against their own reason. <laughs> That's what happened this I whole know. time. Uh, As you're watching him do this stuff, and you're, there's videos of him teaching classes, and he's saying stuff like, hey, you, suck your fat belly in, you bitch. Suck it in, you know, and shit like that. And what? I'm like, why are these people sitting here? What? Yeah, dude, that's wow. how he would talk to his class. He'd teach his class in these little Speedos, and he'd go, <laughs> and then he'd like be really sexually inappropriate with a lot yeah. of women, and raped one woman, oh, and wow. she, yeah, he's he's on the lam now. He he, he actually took off. He's in Mexico because he comes back to the U.S. He's got to pay like one point something million dollars and maybe get under criminal charges. But it, wow! But the the fascinating part about this whole documentary is as I'm watching it because there was like one part where because these these people followed him like he was a god, and even the women in, that are talking about how he abused them, they still talk about him like he's no. some. Oh, dude, it's crazy. Like Stockholm syndrome. Oh, dude, one woman was like, uh, she was one of his students, one of his pupils, and she followed him around, and she stayed at their house, and one night they were watching this movie, and he like grabbed her head and like started kissing her, and she kind of pushed away, and then he did it again, and then he, she went in the kitchen, he followed her, raped her, then he goes back and sits down in front of the movie, and she kisses him goodnight. She says goodnight, and she goes back, and I'm like, he just raped you. Like what? It's like the it's crazy how that just cold, didn't even process it. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, it's really weird. I just remembered something that I want to ask you, uh, and I know that I'm not the the big political guy and stuff, but I know I'm sure you've been paying attention. Uh, you got to tell me what you think about uh, Michael Bloomberg oh. putting his his hat in the ring. Oh boy! That's so you big, said he used to be a conservative. Is that? True. He's he's a Democrat. He's been one for a little while. Um, obviously a billionaire. Yeah. He says he's going to run as a Democrat, uh, and I have a lot of thoughts about this. Um, one, if he were the nominee as a, as a Democrat, I think he would pose the biggest challenge to Trump because mm. he could go toe to toe. Mm -hmm. he, and you and now your theory on that is because of his pull that he just he's got a lot of charisma too. He's like got the, his he's got the power, the money, and he's. He, he could sit there and fire back. The thing about Trump is if you get on stage with him, there's very few people that he won't uh, like bully. You know what I mean? To make him look kind of like... He'll make them... Like he did this with Hillary. He, he made her break a couple times and you could tell. Right. And it just makes them look weak. And when you're electing a leader, you, you don't want your... You, you want to look strong. Right. The other person can't break you. Um, uh, Tulsi Gabbard from uh, the Democrats, I think would also pose that threat to, to Trump. She was a... She's a veteran, military veteran. Right. She's a badass. Yeah, you've talked she about seems her calm. before to me. I think he would try to push her around. She could pull up the fact that she served in in war and he mm -hmm. he dodged it, and that would make him look like a what you know like a like a pussy or whatever. They will never have her as a nominee. Um, the the the, the Clintons, in fact, are, are, seem to be totally anti her or whatever. Um, uh, Bloomberg, I think, could do the same thing. Here's the problem: I don't think that the that the Dems will give him the nomination. He's just another billionaire white guy. He's like the enemy, even though he says he's a Democrat. Yeah. So like their whole strategy of being anti-wealthy, powerful billionaire, t you know, I don't know if their who, base would even ba vote for him. Who's, I mean, are they really still pushing like Bernie uh, or who, who's their main like uh, horse Front going into the, uh, to the race? It's, it's too early to say, but I think Biden. Biden? Yeah, I think Biden will probably uh, get it. Um, and, and, and that's why Trump's going after him, you know, now because he knows that. Oh, uh, like, yeah. But if so, here's my other theory: If Bloomberg doesn't get the nomination because he pledged to spend 150 million of his own dollars uh, to make this happen, so money's not an issue for this guy, right? I don't think he'll get the nomination. I don't think that. And the Democrats, 
if they don't want you to win, if their main, if their top brass doesn't want you to win, you're fucked. Like, yeah, well, remember what happened to Bernie? Last yeah, year. what they did with or Bernie last, last time. time yeah. Oh, it was, uh, it was hilarious. It was crazy. Totally it, slimy. So if Bloomberg doesn't win the nom and decides to run third party, that is a wrench in the whole. Who knows what could happen? Because I definitely think Bernie well, can't win that way. Never. It'll I just it'll divide all the votes up. That's right? it. Yeah. Now, will he pull more from the Democrats? Of course he would, because he's already he, came out leaning that way. Right? Or, it would only make sense that he. Or would. will he pull more from Trump? Because hmm. Trump is abrasive as shit. He's got a very strong base that will vote for him no matter what. Right. But there's a lot of people that vote for Trump because they don't want a Democrat to win. And, yeah. And, and they kind of, you know, they're like, nobody oh, wants gotta... to talk about those people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and and could Bloom, I mean, who knows, you know, but this is crazy. Interesting, huh? Yeah. It's going to be a, when will it really start? I mean, it's already starting to kick up, but it will it kick, start kicking up at the, at what, the end of this year to beginning of next year? Yeah. Like, when will we really see it ramp up? The closer up? we get, the more money, the more intensity uh, that you're going to start you know bringing up and that's going to start coming up this is going to be a very interesting one it seems like the past few elections have gotten um i mean here's the thing too i every election they they tell you is the fucking most important one <laughs> this one's the most important <laughs> if we don't get our guy the world's gonna end they're always gonna say that they say every time yeah and then they always say this this is the worst election this is the most <laughs> mudslinging this is the worst yeah. dude you know what though i've done my my research on history yeah they used to fucking fight, like fist fight. They used to actually <laughs> print articles about each other, calling each other names, yeah. like, yeah, like you're a pussy and he's a, you know, whatever. Like they used to do shit like that back then. I don't think it's any different than the way it's, it's no, always been, you no. know? I got a, I got a story I got to share with the the audience uh, of our trip to down. I forgot about this. Um, we were down south, right? And so uh, normally when we travel somewhere and we stay in a hotel room, if we're not in like a VRBO or whatever, or Airbnb, uh, Justin and I typically room together because we like our room below 50 degrees <clears throat> and yeah. Doug and Sal stay together. Well, that not the night before we uh, we go and do our interview, mm -hmm. Justin and I are up watching TV and that was the the launch of the new Cybertruck uh, oh, that yeah. Elon Musk did, right? <laughs> yes. And so Justin and I uh, obviously have similar tastes. We both actually drive a similar truck uh, currently right now. And we're like, what a fucking what a shit, piece ugly. of shit. That is the ugly. I would never fucking drive that. We're talking shit about it. Then they yeah. do the whole, they throw the 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 metal ball against it. It's supposed to be shatterproof. The fucking window shatters. So it's yeah. a total, it's a total debacle. disaster. And so we're yeah. talking shit about it all night and into the morning. Well, we go do our interview. We do everything. <laughs> and then we're in the car. We're driving home back from uh, our talk with uh, Arthur Brooks. And Sal pipes in. He goes, dude. Did you guys see that see cyber truck? truck? That shit is badass. I would totally drive that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Justin and I both go, uh, of course like you I would. knew it. Of course you First would. First of all, yeah. did you see this the video of the <laughs> of it doing the tug of war with the F-150? No, I did no, not. I, oh, I didn't get past its ugly ass the, look. It pulled the F, F, F-150 <laughs> up a hill as the F-150 is burning out. Couldn't even touch it. Uh, the zero to 60 on that thing, the tow capacity... This, the the fucking steel well electric motors I mean I'm sure that's built like the the torque is there Fort you know let's let's work on the design yeah <laughs> it is that's a kind little, of an important oh, the, thing the, for the, the buyer the, the memes that came out yeah. uh, the next day it looks like a DeLorean oh it was so hilarious it looked like yeah. a four year old drew it that's like, he's, like. like he posted the DeLorean in the Aztec or whatever right yeah. that Pontiac oh, that ugly ass like like, like they had sex they or whatever yeah. <laughs> totally yeah I mean I agree with you guys it's a, it's a it's a style that's a little yeah. hard to whatever but uh, it goes with your well, it's just here's it the thing goes with your shoes the truck market is like people expect it to look like a truck you know you're not gonna get like all these like cowboys and farmers well, out there with a the fucking like hey, moon well, sled. That, that was the, so we were debating and arguing, right? Once we started making fun of it, Sal was yeah. defending the side of it, right? And, and and that was listen, if you're trying to go after the largest market in the in in the country, which is the truck market, it, you you ought to appeal to the your number one customer, which is your farmer ranch owner you know who's driving it with his cow his cows and middle his horses america. yeah middle yeah. america and i'm telling you right now that appeals to the silicon valley sows yeah. that are like never yeah. owned a truck in their life before this will be their first truck they buy because it sounds cool or looks cool and spacey well so <laughs> so so here's the deal okay so when he first lost launched tesla remember this probably the riskiest market you could possibly enter in america is the automobile market yeah the, when's the last time a new Automobile company succeeded. Kia. They, yeah. No, that who, who makes Kia? 
Is it Toyota? No. Yeah, yeah, it's not. No. A, no, Toyota doesn't make Kia. No, no there's it's just another Kia by itself. Right? I don't think Kia is by itself. Yeah, I think it's so. Kia, anyway. and, Kia and Hyundai were your two, last two big ones that ma- they, that came in the market. It's mm-hmm. very, very difficult. There's right, a, there's, right. A, there's a whole. You're right though. That's, that's a, I was yeah, just you asked question. He comes that's out with an electric car, but when the only electric car op- uh, option was the, the Prius, yeah, yeah. that was another one. Was a Prius. He comes out with Tesla and crushes it. Does very, very well. I wouldn't. I don't know, man. And here's the thing. And remember, this company Tesla, it's more like a tech company. It's it, the consumers aren't. Yeah. It, it's very, very They're different. Need to iterate. It's very, very different. Right also, the way they designed the truck was to make the manufacturer of it cheap and fast. In fact, you're looking at an, an, an insane electric vehicle with a 300 mile, yeah, whatever, under forty thousand dollars. See, it's another thing. Doesn't make sense. That's me. crazy. Yeah. yeah. Do you it, know he has? It, you know how many orders they got in the first two days? No. Fourteen million dollars. Boom. $14 million? $14 million. So what's the, what's the holding? Like, how much money do you put up to, like, reserve one? 100 bucks. That was it? Really? You put 100 bucks to reserve. Did you see the quad that you can get that goes in the back? No. They have an electric quad. No, I saw that, but that was really something that that comes with hilarious. it? And that comes with it. You have to buy you have the to truck. Buy that then you can, get the, you can get the quad. That see, I, I like the- Tesla. I like, you know, the innovation. I like all that. I just, like, again... They need to come out with another one because that's just that's not going to appeal to me. So here's what I here's my theory. I, I agree with you guys. I think it's a very bold kind of crazy style. I think it could go either way. Yeah. But the second celebrities start driving it, if that happens, it's going to be fucking cool. Watch what happens because remember the look at the Prius, ugly yeah, fucking. Yeah, for dorks car. who care about like you know what Mark Wahlberg's driving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> not Mark middle America, Wahlberg. bro. Yeah. Not middle, not middle, not middle America. <laughs> we'll see what happens. They don't give dude. a shit what Justin Bieber's doing. Yeah. Hey, we'll you see. Know. We'll see what happens. We'll see. You know, we're recording this podcast. We'll, <laughs> yeah, see, yeah. we'll see what the results are. I mean, how long do you get? How long's your window? I mean, if, uh, I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna argue with you. Like, I don't know what we're gonna look like in 2030. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, it's right. it, it could be 2040. Could be yeah. radically different. No, because I remember. Too Tesla came out. Well, their first model was like ugly as hell, and then they kept like improving on it. Yeah. Then they came out with some pretty good looking cars. So. Yeah, we'll see, dude. Who we'll knows? S- we'll see. I would. I'll give it. I'd say I got we, hope. Let's wait until it comes out, right? Then we'll know for sure, yeah. right, right? If it was like a, a failure or a success. Well, you know, I don't know. Speaking, but that one, no. Speaking of big companies and money, did you guys see what uh, Apple over in Austin one billion dollar facility they're building? The whole, oh, it's man. starting off with five thousand employees. They projected to get up to fifty. 15,000 employees. Wow. You know, this is, did you see Trump campaigning all around it too? No. Oh, you didn't see that? No. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of like, of course, each side that are, you know, Trump's like, look what I did, you know? Oh, look, he's gonna, taking yeah, credit for it. He is because of, of the tariffs. Uh, so, and that, and they, him, oh, because Apple was going to build. I see what he's saying. Right. There. So okay. him and, you know, him and Cook are like, are, they're, they're in, they're in cahoots. You know, they're friends and stuff, right? Okay. So yeah. that was, so all part of this, like, okay, we're going to do these tariffs. So you, you they're, and, and I think Apple has like, thousands of tens of thousands of employees overseas that work on a lot of products and part of the tariffs obviously is going to directly fuck apple mm. and this is kind of their way of saying okay we're gonna we're gonna open this affiliate now of course the left is arguing the other side is like okay you know fifteen thousand employees in the grand scheme of things is nothing apple's got hundreds of thousands of employees supposedly some ridiculous what a terrible argument i know i know that's like, it, like oh, fuck those fifteen thousand people. It's nothing, right? At the end of the day, what, what, is that their argument? Those yeah, are our jobs. Yeah, though. yeah. That's kind of the argument yeah, on that side. It's saying, it's saying a drop in the drop in the bucket in comparison to everything they're doing over there. But today, it's so just, that's another major campus they have. Yeah, yeah huge here in the states. So yeah. it's it's Doug, t- maybe Doug can look up the square footage on it. The square, it's massive, dude. It's I would I would. I mean I, that's cool. Property I, in Austin that would that might be a right. good investment. Of course, you know because that's a no brainer. It's supposed to be finished by twenty two. I think I, I think I, I read. Uh, double check me. Maybe Doug looked that up. Austin's a great town too. Oh yeah, what a great town. I mean, I could see <laughs> that's the one place I would move to. Uh, you know, out, out of out we of like the area. It. I know we all liked. It. I, I love it there. That. But I thought that was I thought that was really interesting that they were doing that. Um, I read the I read the article and then I and then I went down the 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 YouTube rabbit hole of both left and right though because I, I typically what happens when I read an article like that I find it interesting I go search the people that are countering it talking shit about it three million square foot campus uh, yeah. yeah three million square feet wow, wow. that's oh, fucking that, yeah, that is massive huge. Wow. so speaking of, so like Silicon Valley always does crazy things like uh, in terms of like so they'll get the keto diet now everybody's doing keto yeah. and everybody's doing this like shake to, in order to stay at the desk and all this. So I guess like the latest is like dopamine fasting. Like, oh, I've heard of this. Have you heard of this? Huh? So it, it, it's 
basically just it's no caffeine, no sex. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, no stimulants, no uh, technology is is the big one. So like they're fasting from phones, social media, like everything, and then just literally drinking water, uh, and then and then working. So it's <laughs> how you how, well, well they're not working then. I, I was just saying, yeah, it's, it's gotta be, be it's gotta be no no if no dopamine like yeah. that. This, so this this is actually I mean this is it's so funny how they brand it dopamine fasting this is a uh, right yeah it well, we've, works we've been, we've been saying digital wellness yeah. I know uh, no it works I mean if the more exposed you get to dopamine the more receptors get down re- regulated the more you become tolerant to it so you build up a tolerance it makes perfect sense you go off into the woods yeah. and no electronics meditate don't drink no coffee do this for a few days when you come back of course you're gonna be on fire but here's the thing they're all, they always go to the full extreme like everything you know at once you know for a few like it's always about that and instead of just like making boundaries and doing like it's, a couple of these like healthy practices they're always individually tr- they're trying to figure out shortcuts and hacks well i mean at, at the end of the day it's a it's a positive move in the right direction it is i think yeah, for, is for someone like us who have, who have been put, putting the message out of the importance of digital wellness I think it's a step in the right direction for them to whether they brand it their their own. Call At least it's it, awareness, right? Yeah, 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 right. People are, uh, which we. I mean, I think it was inevitable. This was heading this way. I mean, yeah. there's there's enough information now that we're like, okay, and even having somebody like uh, Near come on and kind of counter the irresistible message that I had been talking about for two years. Uh, although I I love that interview and I agree a lot with what he's saying. I also still think that. You know, yeah. we, people need to put some parameters people around that. People are still that. very susceptible to yeah. it and getting hooked. Yeah, like and there's a lot of people that were just naively going into it and you know putting your kids in front of it at a very young age and not thinking twice about it or not limiting them when you're at, and th- those those things need mm. to be put in place for mm. sure. Hey, I wanted to bring uh, something up to you guys. Have have you guys been getting a lot of messages from people who did the the gut health course? From NCI, oh, a ton. Oh, I love it, dude. People are really, uh, and he's still doing it, right? Yes. I mean, that's phenomenal. This is a full-on course. That- I've, I've seen a ton of trainers that are signed up for that. If you're a trainer and you're listening to this show and you're not, I mean, if you're not a trainer, you just want to learn about gut health. It's I, a six hundred dollar course that he's he's giving away for free until yeah. I don't know when. Yeah, I know, know that. I, I think this is the. I think he's running it till uh, the end of this month, and then I think they're transitioning out of that. But that's something specific for Mind Pump listeners that they are doing. And I know we've already had a, a huge turnout. He's told me that they've gotten a, a ton of people come through, and they've got a ton of great feedback. I've already gotten a bunch of. DMs around it. And listen, if you're somebody who, 100% if you're a fitness or a health professional or practitioner, uh, you'd be silly not to take advantage of this free course. Uh, and if you're just a normal person who wants to learn more about, you don't have to be a, a certified trainer to go through this course. It's an online digital course. It's absolutely free. It's something that NCI is doing for Mind Pump. It's a, it's a, something that we worked out with our partnership and relationship with them. Uh, I'm, I'm super excited and, and happy with what we've seen so far. Excellent. Mm-hmm. All right, our first question is from Eric Rich. Any truth to squats and deadlifts thickening the waistline? Mm, this is one of those uh, one bodybuilder of those things, myths. Yeah, ah, that's the thickening. That is really hurt a lot of people's progress. There's, there's a few things that get promoted in the fitness space, in the health space, that cause cause a lot of problems. Um, now, I there is a little bit, okay, and I'm going to say this with a grain of salt, a little bit of truth to this in well, the sense that when you're doing heavy exercises that require a lot of core stability, you do work and build somewhat the muscles of the core. Now, how much are, are you going to add to your waist? Nothing perceptible. What's going to end up happening is you're going to feel tighter in the waist. This is a this is a this was something that was told uh, by, that bodybuilders have been selling for a long time. But the thing you got to consider with bodybuilders is the amount of drugs that they're on, the amount of muscle that they build. Um, for them, and a lot of them get these big guts because of some of the hormones they get on anyway. And I think a lot of them play, pl- place blame on deadlifts and squats. This is mm-hmm. largely a myth, and it's caused a lot of people not to do Listen, the two best I was, exercises. I was taking all the steroids, and I was deadlifting and squatting like crazy, and I have one of the nastiest V tapers. It has 95 plus percent to do with your genetics. Mm. If you have a good hip to shoulder ratio and you pile on muscle on your shoulders and your back from doing deadlifts and overhead pressing and squatting and you'll end up still with the same ratio to your waist. So even if you did put on a little bit of muscle there, you're going to also put it on the back so much that it's it's going to look the same. It's not 
it's so silly to me that we this this message has been uh, perpetuated into the the masses. And it really only it, it I, I guess if I was a um, a competitor that the amount of deadlifting and squatting that I would do in comparison to a lot of the other work would be uh, wouldn't be like the average person. So my my average client, I'm telling them that I want them deadlifting and squatting every single week. Maybe if I'm a competitor, I'm less concerned about, you know, watching my deadlift or my squat go up 200, 300 pounds and becoming a great squatter or a deadlifter. Uh, I want to get, I want to get the, some of the reap some of the benefits from it, but maybe it's not something I'm training two, three times a week. Like most people or like a lot of our programs that we have for the average person. It's so funny because the average person is looking to work out to get leaner you know, boost their metabolism, improve their health and mobility, and build some muscle. So when you're squatting and deadlifting and you combine that with a good diet, you're going to get leaner, and then you're going to build some muscle. Um, how much muscle are you going to gain around your waist? Maybe, I don't know, uh, not even a quarter inch. How much inches are you going to lose off your waist by getting leaner? A lot. A lot. I mean, most of us, especially men, store a lot of our body fat around our waist. So what you're going to do is you're going to take out two of the most effective exercises known to trainers and coaches, squats and deadlifts, for fear that you're going to thicken your waist when really get leaner. That makes all the difference. Not That's to, what's going to shrink Not your only waist. that, but like how much deadlifting and squatting does for the glutes. Mm -hmm. And the glutes are part of that, what give us totally. that hourglass and that V-taper look. So you you so you you, yeah, you should develop the major muscles more like right. focus on that right so you know you got to think your your hips your hips are here and then your waist is up here and by deadlifting and squatting you're going to build the butt and the glutes a lot more than skipping those exercises to do things like what kick kickbacks walking lunges leg press other inferior movements to cut when it that when it comes to building your glutes, so you're, you're going to eliminate those in fear of the a little bit that your obliques may build from doing the deadlift. This is where my brain literally short circuits. <laughs> I just don't. I don't fucking get it. I don't get it. If you're trying to build muscle, you're trying to build muscle. You're trying to get stronger. You have to be able to support your upper body. And it, you know what are we doing here? Like, it's 100 from the bodybuilding community. Yeah, I mean that's to the point where men are where, are wearing waist trainers. Right, you, you have men that are working out which is the equivalent to a boob job right it, you have there no it's worse no, worse it's way you're worse. actually losing stability and muscle and causing yourself you dramatically increase right. yeah yeah you're, it's like you're well, wearing for a, the sake of vanity is my point it's like you're wearing a cast we and we haven't dis, we haven't i don't it's been a long time actually we, this was something we hammered a lot in probably the first like 300 episodes and we haven't circled back around to this in a long time and i know we have a, obviously a, a much larger audience today than back then the the this come this, this is why they they wear these waist trainers so the the male and the female it's like a corset yeah it's a court they wear this corset around their waist and the reason why the there's before and after pictures that show it working and then people measuring look I lost two inches on is because you've lost you've killed the muscles the same idea that somebody if you were to break your arm and you put it in a cast for six months or whatever the time frame you normally wear a cast after a broken arm. And you and you cut open the cast. What does your left arm that had the cast on look like compared to your right arm? It looks like a noodle. Mm -hmm. I mean, you lost all the muscle on there. That's what you're doing to your waist now. For somebody who is, I guess, 100 percent stuck on the the vanity of what I need to look like on stage to win, try and win a trophy, and this creates the illusion of a better hip to waist uh, hip to waist ratio and shoulder to waist ratio, and that's all you give a shit about. I guess maybe these are these are steps that you can take, but if you're the fucking average person, this is the stupidest and most ridiculous thing. It's I think it's stupid for those people to do it. I think it's even more stupid and ridiculous for the average person to be doing this because what you're compromising. I know yeah, a young totally. I know a young lady that uh, because she wore this these waist trainers because they encourage you to wear them all day or sleep with them, and this is how the muscles shrink because you're the corset is st stabilizing your body, the like muscles a, now like a cast, yeah. like a cast. She actually had a blockage in her intestines because it's so tight mm. and it caused problems, had to go and get surgery, which completely ruined uh, her aesthetics or whatever, the looks. Like, right. it, this, the obsession with shrinking the waist is one of the worst obsessions ever in the fitness space. Now, yes, it's true. 
Um, it is, you know, a somebody who's lean is going to have a nicer hip to waist ratio for women or a waist to shoulder ratio in men. That's true. But going to the extent of hurting yourself, damaging your body or preventing yourself from becoming more fit, strong and healthy in order to achieve this illusion, it doesn't look better in real life. No, it no. really doesn't. If you look at like p- pull up some pictures of cuz this this got a, this obsession happened in the you know the you know 100 200 years ago where women were wearing actual corsets um, and causing lots of problems and back problems and they had these tiny little waists or whatever. Do you know what these women look like with these corsets off? If you were standing in front of you naked, it wouldn't look good. It looks bad. It yeah. doesn't look good on a man either. So like to have this obsession to create this illusion, um, you actually don't look any better. All you got to do is get lean. Get lean. Whatever your waist size is based on your genetics is what it is. Build the muscle so you have this nice, strong, stable physique. Yeah. In real life, that will make Work that will with look, your body's potential. And please, that will look the best. God, do not eliminate squats and deadlifts for that reason. Dumb. Next question is from Br Porter twenty three. What is the difference between priming and warming up? Major, oh. major difference. One specific, the other one is nothing. Aimless. Really. Yeah, one is just getting your core temperature up. Yeah, warming up. the 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 goal of warming up, if you ask anybody, like, hey, what's why are you warming up? What's the goal? Well, the goal is to prevent injury. Okay, that's great. That's the least that proper warming up or prime. By the way, priming, warming up, it, they all they both entail doing something before your workout to you know prevent injury and make your workout more effective, or at least that's what they should do. Now, warming up, general warming up, uh, without any real individualized attention or attention to how you move or with any corrective component. You're going to get some injury prevention benefits, but you're not going to get a lot of, you know, uh, getting better results benefits or being stronger benefits or improving movement benefits. That's what priming does. Priming is very individualized. So really they're the same thing, but they're not because priming is incredibly. So I'll give you an example, right? So let's say you have somebody with, uh, let's say I have a, a female client who can't feel her glutes when she does squats or deadlifts and her butt is underdeveloped. Um, a warm up might be, hey, let's have you walk on the treadmill, right. do some or, general or stretches. Grab your quad, stretch your quad yep. a little bit. Just stretch everything out. Do the cross your legs over and stretch your hamstrings. Yeah, like just do high knees. A yeah, general yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Now, priming, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at our movement patterns. I'm going to say, oh, okay, you're, you're not feeling your glutes. Let's prime your glutes in a way so that you know how to connect to them. Oh, it looks like you have some ankle mobility problems. Let's work on your ankle mobility so that when you squat, you have better form. Oh, it looks like you have forward shoulder. Let's prime your body properly so that t- you can hold yourself in that proper posture better because you can feel the muscles more effectively and because now you have familiarity um, with what proper posture is supposed to feel like, which is what proper priming does. So if you prime properly, you go into your workout and you and it's like it's like you take imagine this, your workout has a potential. The number is 100. The most you can get out of your workout is 100. Proper priming ensures that you get cl- as close to 100 as possible. If you don't prime, you're lucky if you get 100. You're probably going to only get a fraction of the total potential because you're not able to get into those positions properly, feel the muscles you want to feel. So priming makes a huge difference. Well, and you know the point you're making too, this is why we created a program around it because it's not as simple as just warm up or telling the audience like, oh, here are priming movements for you. Well, it should be individualized, right? You should have somebody, hopefully a professional, or in this case – we have an at-home test that you take where we have we broke the body up in three zones and we have you do this test and it's either pass or fail in each zone. So if you cannot do this movement perfectly, it's considered a fail. If it's a fail, there are a series of movements that we tell you you should do to prime your body to help you with exercises that would require those movement patterns. Mm-hmm. So that is the idea. The idea is that you take a test like this, you get to you learn what areas or where you have dysfunction or you don't have great mechanics. And then you start to prime exercises to help you perform exercises better. And then it's specific to you. And that's what your warm up, quote unquote, prime priming should look like every day before you go into your workout. And it should be very specific to you. It's about setting the position. It's about, you know, uh, being able to stabilize the joints and getting those supporting cast muscles activated. And then that way we can take that now 
into uh, you know that that specific exercise, and you're going to have a more effective uh, form with that. You're going to fall right into the, the most optimal recruitment pattern. So you, it, it just helps you to uh, you know eliminate a lot of the compensations that may occur, or you know like when you go through the motions, you're not actually activating the, the ideal muscles that you want. Yeah, look, look at it this way: um, Should everybody work out the same way? Right, we're all working out. Right. We're all in the gym doing the same exercises. We're all doing the same stuff. We're all working out. How effective is that versus all of us work out differently based on our goals and our bodies, our current fitness level, and all the other factors that make us individuals? Which one is more effective? Oh, it's night and day. Not even close. It's not even in the same universe at how fast your body will progress and the kind of results you'll get if your workout is individualized Versus a just general going to the gym and just moving uh, type of workout. Same thing with priming and warming up. So if you're like, eh, you know, I warm up and I feel okay, and you've never really truly primed, you have, you are, it's like you were born with one eye closed. You have no idea what you're missing until you open the other eye. You have no idea what priming can do for your body unless you've actually primed your individual body. Once you do it once, you'll never go back to warming up again. Next question is from Freeman Axtell. Are there any benefits to stability training or using tools like a BOSU ball? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, mm -hmm. but boy, was it overstated for no, a while. No, no, but you know what, though? This, is, uh, this reminds me of like what we talked about in the intro today. Like, you know, leave it to fucking the fitness community to mm -hmm. take something where there's some good science to support the benefits of something. And then we just bastardize the shit out of it. And we just, now it's for everybody. And we're doing, we're balancing everything on a, on a Dyna disc or on a BOSU ball or on a foam pad and trying to make workouts. Because uh, it's harder. Yeah, just more difficult. Where, yes, there is, I think there's incredible benefits. And there's definitely an application for specific people. Uh, but that that's just it. It's like, you know, I, I use tools like this for a client that it makes practical sense, especially like in the, the rehab area. Mm -hmm. Like when you're mm -hmm. dealing with rehabilitation, uh, using tools to, to stabilize somebody or challenge their stability uh, is a great way for you to help the support all the muscles that are yeah. supporting a joint or an, in, or an area that was injured. That there's a lot of benefits to that. I see it a lot of times as like in a regression. So if I get somebody that is coming in and I notice instability all over the place, like uh, this is an area that we're really going to have to focus on just like strength training. Like this is something that we need to gain that type of awareness and, and get the body to, you know, respond properly in unstable positions. That way now when we're in stable positions, everything is, you know, working in unison and, and we can then build upon that. Yeah, there's a few components that go into your ability um, to balance. Now we're talking about healthy individuals. Okay. So barring any, you know, buddy that has nervous system or disorders or vestibular system disorders, let's just say everybody's healthy here. So this is what we're, so we're comparing healthy people to each other. Balance comes from a diff few different places. Generally speaking, strength is great for balance. So if you're strong, you're, you're probably going to have better balance than somebody who's healthy, but that's also weak. So like when I would train older people, um, just getting them stronger would dramatically improve their balance because now they could mm -hmm. move with better stability and strength. Now, more specifically, balance is a skill, just like any other skill. Uh, so, you know, give you an example. If you practice balancing on a, let's say you're walking across a, you know, a skinny, you know, pole or something, the more you practice it, the better you get at it because your balance, you tend to build it as a skill. Now, is there carryover into the rest of your life? Yes, somewhat. Most of it is to the specific skill. Some of it goes to the rest uh, of your life. Now, in the past, it was overstated. In the past, it was like, we're doing this on everything, mm -hmm. uh, which there's no form of training that should be applied to everything. It'd be like, powerlifting's got great benefits. Everybody powerlifts all the time. No, same thing with balance. But that being said, incorporating some components of balance, which for the average person could be as simple as doing single leg 
Exactly. Exercises. There's levels and we have yeah. to, yeah, definitely a good point to start like stable. And then like, now we're going one leg. Now we're going, you know, on something that is like a, a, an air disc, like where it's, you know, something that's a little bit more challenging. It's so that way it is, it is like you're, you're, you're increasing the level of difficulty as part of the training. And then we move on from there. I, th- I think the most applicable type of balance training is just the one legged type stuff. It's the most applicable to the real world. Right. It's the thing you're going to be doing in the you experience world. that the most. Yeah, that's yeah. where I would say the most uh, application I agree is. With well, that. I mean, here's an example. This is literally a conversation that I was, was having this last week with a, a client friend of mine. So she's an old client. She's also a really good friend of ours. And uh, I hadn't seen her in probably six months. She stopped by. She lives in LA area. And she came up to visit Katrina and I. And she wanted me to kind of like assess her. She just went and saw uh, uh, her orthopedic friend that checked her out. And she said, she first saw a doctor and this doctor uh, prescribed her insoles for a shoe. And I said, what? I said, absolutely not. I said, let me, let, I'll see you when you come down. Like, I don't want you doing that. Let me look at you. And I had told her before that uh, this could be a co- an issue with her. And what it is, is she has uh, peroneal tendonitis. And a lot of that is because she has, uh, she excessively pronates on one side. So her foot's flat. Right. So her foot flattens out on one side or pronates, right? So it flattens in inward uh, or collapses inward. This is uh, really common. I see this a lot in people squatting. This was an issue for myself. And so this was also a close to home thing as I'm, I'm helping her out with it. And so what I told her we needed to do is we needed to do soft tissue work to uh, alleviate some of that. Okay. So here's where you have application for tools like foam rolling or lacrosse balls to do the soft tissue work on hers to re- alleviate some of the pain that she's having. And then we need to strengthen your ankle and your feet. And so exercises to do that. Now, I, she loves when I recently got her into deadlifting and squatting like heavy in the last year, and she's seen incredible progression and changed her body. And her, she loves being strong. She was like one of those girls that was all circuit type training. I showed her strength training. It changed her life. She's, now, here's the, 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 the drawback was, well, she started deadlifting and squatting really, really heavy while also having these flat feet. This caused the peroneal tendonitis. And now I'm having to reverse her back out of that and say, listen, back off of the intensity. I don't want you doing any you know, deadlifting with both feet on the ground anymore. So now we do soft tissue work. We we work on your, your feet, strengthen that. We do some an- uh, ankle strengthening exercises. And then what I want you doing is deadlifting on one leg. And when you deadlift on, on one leg, I want you to focus more on the stability and the control of that more so than you trying to get more weight up. And so here's an example of how stability training is incredible and a, a tool that uh, you, I, as a trainer, you probably use all the time. Uh, what ended up happening, though, is the, the science, the support, the benefits of why a trainer like myself would prescribe something in that situation, just like the example I just gave with the foam rolling. We take that and now it's for everybody and everybody should do it and do it all the time. And then we start doing it on, you know, oh, wow. Well, if you can do it on one leg, try doing it on a foam pad. Now try doing it on a BOSA ball. Now try and hop and then balance and do it. And then yeah. and so, so we just, we take something really good that has uh, a, a application. Because uh, yeah, it looks cool and it's hard. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Next question is from Erica Elko. I would love to hear you go into depth on skinny yoga girls self-selecting yoga as their sport because of their body type. Uh, this was a specific question that was uh, given to me on my last uh, Instagram Q and A, and she uh, she DM me after I responded because I gave like the short answer to this. Uh, what same. was her question on there? So that this is a question. Uh, well, she uh, somebody else asked me. This was actually somebody else saying that was. A, a, would you go into more depth for everybody else? Is this but, like why are why are, why are why are yoga girls so flexible and, and always skinny. skinny and lean? Oh yeah. And my answer to that was there's more of a self selection bias there than there is yo- the yoga's. I said what yeah. I I gave the analogy of uh, it's the same reason why yeah, it's appealing for them. I said it's the same reason why basketball players are seven foot tall and can jump. Yeah, it's like you, you look at you look at a bunch of pro level basketball players and you think oh if i play basketball i'll be 7 feet tall right no that's not exactly that is exactly the analogy that i right, gave right. and she said could you elaborate on that and i said yeah absolutely and it's just as humans we gravitate towards the things that we're good at and that's not this is not to say that there's not benefits to doing yoga but why people think that yoga girls are really skinny and limber is because skinny and limber girls tend to gravitate towards yoga. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. It's mm-hmm. because somebody who is 
overweight and tight really, really bad, probably takes a yoga class the first time and realizes they fucking suck at it and it's hard and they bail and they don't do it, which the irony of all this is that person is the person that sucks at it and it's really, really hard we'll for- Will benefit the most. Will benefit yeah. the most. And the, the skinny yoga girl who is already limber- and is flexible as shit that loves taking yoga all the time. Mm -hmm. She'd be deadlifted. Right. She she's not getting as much benefit as the person who is neglecting to do it because it's hard and it's difficult. Yeah, it's um it's like when you look at a swimmer, you know, Olympic swimmers, and you're like, wow, swimmers really have these, you know, wide flat backs and, you know, long arms and short legs. And yeah. you know, if I swim a lot, I'm gonna have the broad shoulders and all that stuff. Not necessarily. Now, definitely different sports and training modalities train certain parts of the body more than others. But a large percentage of the reason why top athletes look the way they do is because one of the reasons why they are top athletes in that chosen sport is because their body's built for it. Same reason why long distance runners at the top levels have long, you know, skinny legs and short upper bodies. Um, the one form of exercise where you can actually choose to sculpt your body as you wish, and of course it's still limited by your, there's still limitations like your genetics. But more than any other form of exercise is resistance training. It's the only form of exercise where I can literally look in the mirror. And again, there's limitations, of course, but I can look in the mirror and say, I want more leg. I want you know less shoulder. I want more upper back. I want more bicep. Um, and I can literally construct and design my workout around the way I want to look. No other form of exercise looks at because if you do a lot of yoga or a lot of Pilates or a lot of uh, cycling or swimming or any other form of exercise, there's a very narrow parameter of how you move for that chosen activity. When it comes to resistance training, the only parameter is you're lifting, you're using resistance yeah. and you're, you're training within a particular rep range and you're resting. Other than that, I can sh choose to shape and sculpt my body however I want. So, if you want a body that looks more like a particular type of body, of course, considering your genetic limitations, the best form of exercise you could possibly choose is resistance training. All the other forms of exercise, just simply don't do that. But to those of you that are that have tried a yoga class, um, you know, because I'm this has definitely happened. I've had clients that have, have come to me about this, and I've had to have this conversation with them. Do not be discouraged when you go to a yoga class and you know, you see the, these uh, long, beautiful girls that are limber and doing it so well, and you feel uh, frumpy and out of balance and, and deconditioned and it's tight and it hurts. And so you go, fuck this and you bail. Like the truth is this, that you are the person that needs to be in there. And they're they're not the worse you're at it, the worse you are at it. Yes, probably the more value. You Absolutely, catch. the mo the more value you're going to get working towards uh, getting better at it. So, yeah. have don't, you guys ever taken a yoga class? Yeah, yeah. How do you feel when no, you're I'm terrible at it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I went in. I, I took a bunch. I did yoga for about a year. You know what though? I haven't I haven't done it since I've done all the mobility work that right. I've done. So I would be I, I bet I would be a lot better at it today than when because I did it in the the right in the middle of. 230 bulking jacked oh, Adam, you know what I'm saying? Like Were you that. getting all the stairs? Like, what's Oh, yeah, it was a big joke. It was like, yeah. look at the meathead. They put me right in the front, too. Yeah. I had some like 60 year old lady next to me, and uh, she looked like she was like meditating while she was doing it, and I'm sweating bullets and shaking like a leaf. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. So it was, it was definitely, it's definitely a challenge. And then th again, guess who needed it the most? I did, you know? And it, it wasn't until my stubborn ass dealt with bursitis in my hips and low back pain for long enough while looking amazing on stage mm -hmm. did the light bulb finally go off. Like, okay, it's time for me to stop focusing just on aesthetics and really start to work on all these other issues that I have. And it took a lot of work and it was difficult, but it also paid off. Yoga because. is the one other form of structured exercise. And it's the only form of group exercise that I've ever consistently recommended to clients. There's different types of yoga, of course, and some of them are terrible. Like there's yoga classes that are like trying to pretend to be resistance training classes and, uh, yeah. you know, power yoga and all that stuff. Silly. Um, the more traditional type yoga classes with the meditative component. It's the one group exercise type thing that I've ever consistently recommended to people because I, I've always seen benefits in my clients from incorporating yeah. it. Um, and it's it's got great benefits. I love it. But it's not going to 
make your body look a particular like the top yoga Definitely type not. people. That's not that's Definitely not how it works. There's really the only form of exercise that you can target specific parts of your body and, and really shape your body like a sculptor with limitations, of course, but really the only form of that is resistance training. It's the only one that can do that. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free books, guides, and resources. We got a lot of free stuff on there, stuff that will help you work out, burn body fat, become a better personal trainer. Go to mindpumpfree.com, download all of them. They cost nothing. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find myself at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.